This is K-Pop Sunday brought to you by K-Pop Sunday before you have to go back to work on Monday. We are your hosts, Onyx, Men, and JR. It's February, the month of love and commercial holidays. But we're going to be talking about White Day and its history and the history of ballads and some of our favorite ballads. So let's start with the history of White Day. So you think this episode is going to be all about Valentine's Day in Korea, but it is not. You should definitely go and look up the history of St. Valentine because it is very intense, very crazy. But the actual celebration for Valentine's Day in Korea isn't that different from other places that celebrate it. The main difference, though, in South Korea celebrating Valentine's Day is that women are the only ones to do the gift giving. And because of this, we have White Day. White Day's origin is in Japan, and it's actually a fairly recent holiday. From an article from Forbes, by the author Jack Adelstein, he said, According to the United States Department of Commerce and other sources, White Day is actually the invention of a small confectionery shop. Onyx, will you do the honors of <laughs> pronouncing that for me? <laughs> yeah, the, the shop's name is Ishimura Monsedo in the Hakata region. So this took place in the 1970s. In 1977, an executive of the company, Zengo Ishimura, was reading a woman's magazine and he was looking for inspiration and one letter in particular caught his attention. A woman wrote, and I quote, It's not really fair that men get chocolate from women on Valentine's Day, but they don't return the favor. Why don't they give us something? A handkerchief, candy, even marshmallows. Like I said before, Valentine's Day was mostly focused on women giving the men in their life chocolates and things like that. The article goes on to talk about how he was inspired by the letter and went on to try and figure out how to take action. After talking to women in the company, they decided that March 14th, which is exactly a month after Valentine's Day, would be the first White Day. It wasn't actually called White Day the first time around. In 1978, they held the first Marshmallow Day, which would eventually become White Day. They probably called it Marshmallow Day because of the candy that was developed for it, which was like a chocolate and marshmallow candy, I believe. And also the comment that was made in that letter about the woman saying even a marshmallow would be enough for her. In the following years, White Day became a nationwide event and eventually made its way into other Asian countries like South Korea, China, and Thailand, among many others. So for Valentine's Day, the idea is that younger people like high school students would make personalized and homemade chocolates and the older population would more likely buy expensive chocolates. So overall, this is a day of thanks for women, in a way. It's literally a response to the gifts and chocolate that men get on Valentine's Day. It started out with marshmallows, but in more recent years, there is a broader range of gifts that are given. Often the gift is white itself or it is wrapped in white packaging. You can often see White Day portrayed in Korean movies and dramas. So this is pretty different than Valentine's Day in a America at least because anyone and everyone gives gifts as opposed to just women giving gifts to men. And yeah, that's pretty much condensed history of White Day. And now we're going to go on to learn a little bit about ballads and the history of them. Min? The history of ballads. We're going to separate this topic into two parts, basically, where today we're going to talk about more happy and love related ballads. While in our next episode, we're going to talk about the heart-wrenching and depressing sad ones. But the overall history of ballads as a thing is pretty similar. So here's a very condensed rendition of its history. We're going to use a more recent definition of what a ballad is. And that definition is a slow, sentimental, or romantic song which we have also kindly stolen from dictionary.com. Starting around the 1950s, ballads took on the meaning that we know it for today. These songs are mostly derivative of love and breakups, although they're not limited to these topics only. They are usually characterized by slow tempos and soft instrumentals. Although the genres can range from rock to R&B to country to power metal, you can still see what a ballad is, even in genres where you wouldn't think a ballad would be possible. Can you give us an example of a power metal ballad? Power metal ballads suck. They last for 20 <laughs> minutes and they're god-awful. Rap ballads are great. That works. <laughs> Rock ballads, they're shorter, still kind of boring. I'm sorry. That's my hot take on ballads. I don't mind them. I'm not the biggest fan. Power metal ballads are still the worst. Fight me. <laughs> 
So let's jump over to what our favorite ballads is. And today we're gonna talk about our favorite, like, happy, less depressing ballads. So Onyx, do you have any not horrifically sad ballads? I'm gonna be real with you. I love dim sad ballads. I will eat them all day. <laughs> Part of that is because that's how I got into K-pop, was from sad stuff. And I just, I love angst. I love tragedy. <laughs> So I only have, actually have two happy songs. Like I love a lot of ballads, but I was like looking through what ballads I like. Only two are not sad. <laughs> so that tells you a lot about me. So my first one is JYJ's Found You, which came out in 2010. It was part of the soundtrack for Song Kyo Kwan's Scandal, which was drama that Yuchun from JYJ was in. And it's actually really cute drama. If you haven't seen it, you totally should. If like you're into like Hanakimi and you like historical stuff, you'll be into it. Like, there's a lot of good actors in there. And it's it's pretty good writing, too. But the reason why I really like this ballad was because it's very cheerful, but also because at that time, when TVXQ split, both groups were really only releasing a lot of sad, angsty stuff, especially as title tracks. So having found you, it was such a high point. It was literally like the first happy song that I really saw come out after the drama, especially because like I'd been a fan of TVXQ since debut. So that split really killed me. So seeing like finally like a happy song, it was kind of repairing my heart. It's like, okay, they're going to be okay sort of thing. That's why that song just kind of resonates with me. And also because that was really the first drama I had watched with a friend. Because usually I watch dramas by myself, then I recommend them to other people. I don't usually discover a drama and watch the episode at the same time as someone else. And I had just made a friend around that time who was into K-pop. Actually, I got her into K-pop from Chinese pop with Super Junior. Like this was like our first drama watching experience together and she really loved it and we sometimes go through rewatches at the same time of this drama just because <laughs> it means so much to us. So yeah, it's just, Aww. it's very sweet. Unfortunately, it's very hard to find this track like official stuff for it because of the whole girl we are banning everything to do with JYJ thing. But yeah, it's, it's really good. I recommend it. My other one, this is actually my first happy ballad that I listened to uh, from a Korean artist. It's from Group S. It's their track I Swear that came out in 2003. So this is also one of my first exposures to H.O.T. as well. Like I listened to Mooney June and I listened to JTL and then this Group S was made up of Lee Ji Hyun and Shin Haesung from Xinhua. So this is my first time seeing those two and Kongta. They were a subunit and the music video opens with Kangta looking sharp in that gray suit and he's like being like a businessman <laughs> and like he's like at a meeting and he's uh, giving a presentation he just looks so handsome <laughs> and it was just like wow so yeah it's such a happy song and it's like obviously like a romantic song but it was just you know I'm, I'm I've got a thing for guys who dress in suits who look sharp <laughs> and I didn't know that till I watched that music video so yeah it just a very happy, sweet song, especially since, like, at one point they're on a rooftop singing to this girl who I believe is a flight attendant, because, <laughs> and they all have a crush on her, and one of the members, uh, well, one of the other guys, I think it's Jihoon, is, like, he's, like, blowing glass, and it, it's, he's just, he's working with his hands, and it's great, and then... Blowing glass, like, making a vase? Yeah! <laughs> Oh I'm my not gosh. kidding. That's great. Yeah, and then the other dude, I'm always bad at pronouncing his name. Hey, hey Sung? Hey Sung? H Y E S U N G. Hey Sung. He yeah. he is like a university professor in like trapped in this gorgeous older building and like he's got like it looks like it's a glass rose from Beauty and the Beast and it's just really pretty. Ooh. Like it's just a lot of very good-looking visuals with a lot of handsome dudes. Oh, and also Lee Ji-hoon. He's also riding a motorcycle. And I believe it's in the rain, too, at one point. And it's just handsome. Angsty. No, it's not. It's not. It's not. It's it's genuinely... It like, sounds like it is, though. It sounds yeah. like... It out, when I'm telling it, it sounds angsty, only because I'm good at talking about angst. But it genuinely is sweet. I promise. 
Oh no, I have a third ballad. Oh my. Go, 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 go. Tetsuki's Couple. That is such a sweet song. Oh, oh yeah. I, I oh, just, I goodness. totally forgot about it. But the reason why I think it's very sweet was that the first time I heard that song, they had done like a re-release of their old stuff and it was like a stage performance and someone, you, you know, like those videos where like they're like MR removed. Yeah. Yeah. Even though like supposedly like that's not actually accurate and stuff like that. But from what it sounded like though, it was just kind of cute to hear like an artist and like their fans were communicating they were clearly trying to sing as much live as possible it was very sweet if you see the performance it's very fluffy very just it's very (laughs) sweet and so it's just aw and also because like Tony from H.O.T that's his favorite Jet Keat song so I feel like I need to mention it too That was a, a few years ago, right? It was Oh like, yeah, it was a compl- it was like 2017. Yeah, 2016, 2017. That they did the yeah. the re-release. Yeah, it's it's I do prefer this version over the older version. Once again, I think it's just because of age. It sounds more like looking back. And mm-hmm. it's it, in a way that the thing I like about older artists is that they sometimes the way that they sing their older songs, like it's kind of reminiscent and it makes it kind of better in some ways. So, yeah. Right, right. Once again, I I, I told you I don't have many happy ballads. I don't listen to a lot <laughs> of happy songs. So, yeah, that's as happy as I get. Wait till the next episode. <laughs> I'm going to fill you up with misery. Anyway, speaking of <laughs> something that begins with the letter M, men... <laughs> What ballads do you like? <laughs> Great segue. <laughs> yeah. So as you might have noticed, I'm not very big on ballads, but I do have a playlist on one of my YouTube channels just called Sad K-Pop. <laughs> so I <laughs> looked through that playlist and was like, okay, is any of these songs not very sad in a way? So a lot of them have the same kind of topic. The first one I want to mention is Amber's beautiful, which is basically overcoming bad things in your life and being able to fly and do whatever. I honestly didn't really enjoy her singing that much before this song was released. Like, she might not be the best singer technically out there, but I still do enjoy her non-rap vocals. And many of the songs are about, like, moving on, being hurt by love, but still believing, and stuff like that. (laughs) But hey, they're not very sad. So, Suron? I don't know how to pronounce her name. Suron. Suron, yeah. Yeah. Her song, Winterbird, which is about being hurt by love and then being able to still believe in love, is gorgeous. It's wonderful. I really like that song. I can't remember when I found it, but it was in the playlist and I listened to it and then I listened to it a couple more times. It's... Very good. Same with Lucia's Dalmatian. No, not Dalmatian. Damien. I think it's Damien. I'm not entirely sure. She's an indie artist, so I might be getting the topic of the song completely wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's also about being able to move on. It's very pretty. Good indie. Two other like indie ballads that I like that I'm not entirely sure what are about, but I don't think they're super sad is Klang. Klang? I, I guess. It looks like it would be that. (laughs) That's a weird thing, because that word is a Norwegian word, which means kind of like the sound of an echo, in in a way, or how an instrument sounds. And you would say, like, clunk. So I'm like, ah, confused. (laughs) Anyway, their song, Don't Cry, very good. Sosart's Can't Breathe is also very good. I think both of them are a bit tricky to find on, like, Spotify. But they are in the YouTube playlist that we will link. Then I have two songs that are very on the border of being sad songs. The first one is Beasts, Clenching a Tight Fist, or Clenching My Fist Tight. I've seen so many variations of that, but I've always read it as Clenching a Tight Fist. The topic of the song is a bit weird in a way. Like, it's about a relationship, and it's about a relationship ending and then being over it and then telling yourself that you're over it and it's kind of bitter. But at the end, it also goes on to wanting to go back to the person that has broken up with you. So it's a bit strange, but it is a very pretty beast song. Like if you haven't listened to Highlights, old discography, it's a song that I would really recommend. I think it's on their fiction album, so it's pretty old by now. And the last one isn't really a ballad, but I think it counts as a ballad even though i don't think it is a ballad but again fight me (laughs) i like the song okay (laughs) 
21 has a song called Ugly. The like music video version of it, not close to being a ballad whatsoever, but they have a version called the live session version where playing piano and guitar and they're just sitting down singing it and it's a lot more like a ballad than the original version, but it still feels upbeat, but it also feels like a ballad. Because the theme of the song is basically all about not being perfect and feeling lonely and people telling you that you're not good enough. And the song just lingers on that, on the feeling of you think that you yourself are ugly. And it doesn't really tell you to do anything about it. It just (laughs) talks about the feeling of being ugly and being unwanted. So it's not really a happy song, but it feels more like a happy song. And I have been, since it came out, ugly crying singing that song so many times. So that's fun. It also, in my opinion, has the best use of English in any K-pop song because the whole chorus is completely in English and it's, it's the main use of English in the song. They also, towards the end of it, say that they're lonely. Like, all the English makes sense, and it's not like a out-of-the-place, one random English word in a sentence, which was very common when that song came out. So yeah, I think it's good. If you haven't heard any versions of Ugly by 21, I really like both, but they're for different moods. You should definitely look at the live session version of it. It's more calm than the music video version. It's really interesting when songs like that, they have a more poppy version and then they do have a live session because I feel like one always works better than the other. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which one do you think is better than, in your opinion? I think both work, but the music video one probably might be better because in towards the end of the live session one, I think it's CL that's trying to like cheer people up while singing it and then it sounds a bit out of place, but the rest of it is uh-huh. very pretty. Interesting. It depends on your mood. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Because I remember there was, um, Seventeen had a debut show. Mm. and they were doing an after-school song. I think it's called Because of You, and they made it a ballad. So I looked into the song afterwards, thinking I will find an after-school ballad, and it is a pop song. It is very <laughs> much a pop song, and I was so confused. <laughs> I was like, hold on, <laughs> this is this is a different song completely. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah, but what about you, JR? What's your favorite non-super sad ballads? <laughs> okay, well... I thought I didn't know any ballads. And I feel like I still, I'm still not a big ballad person, but a lot of the ones I do like are OSTs or original soundtracks from K dramas. So there's a few of those on my list. But otherwise, I'm actually not even going to start with an OST. My first one is It's Okay by B2B. And they debuted with poppy, mainstream sounding songs. And then in 2015, They released their first album called Complete, and it had It's Okay on it, which is their first ever ballad single. And they went on to release two more albums or EPs, I believe, afterwards, and those were also ballads before going back to doing more dance music type thing. Hmm. But yeah, this is... They've kind of, I feel like, taken the title of the ballad Idols, and (laughs) all of their ballads are really good, in my opinion. I really like a lot of them. But this one isn't actually a love song. It's more of a chin up and keep going type of song. So if you're going through something and you end up reading the lyrics, I guarantee you'll start crying because... It's just, it's really, I don't know if I want to say uplifting, but it's comforting. Comforting is the word I'm looking for. (laughs) And it's just pretty much just like, the chorus says, look forward to this melody that you like. The voice that will flow out of the radio, the only thing I can do is to sing the lyrics of this song. Even if it's hard, it's okay. Everything will be okay. I believe in you. And it's just, it's just a nice song to listen to when you're not feeling great. It's really calming. It's very soothing. And the the music video is, it's more movie-esque, I would say. It's really soft and there's a lot of earth tones. And it shows the members in different situations struggling to make it through. Like someone's up, there's like a part-timer and there's someone hitchhiking and 
or maybe I'm thinking of Way Back Home. Hold on. <laughs> they have another song that came out called Way Back Home, and I might be mixing the two. <laughs> but that one is also a ballad. That one is also good. This one is my favorite ballad, I think, of theirs. And also, I'm a really big fan of Ilhun. He's my favorite K-pop rapper, and he has a very, like, chill rap in this. So I highly suggest it. Also, side note, Missing You is another great one of theirs. And I put that one on a loop and it helps me fall asleep. <laughs> I don't know why. It's just really calming. So yeah, I love them. And then my next main one that I'm going to talk about, I do have a few honorable mentions that I'll just talk about very briefly. But this next one is Sunny Days, Summer Nights by Sam Kim. And I have to mention Sam Kim. It's like, it's a rule now. In the podcast, Sam Kim is mentioned by me. <laughs> it just happens. <laughs> You have Sam Kim, Onyx has HOT. And I'm just <laughs> sitting much, in the corner much. being like, 21. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, this is a single off of his first full-length album called Sun and Moon, and it was released in 2018. And I have this thing with songs where I associate them with seasons very heavily, and I tend to only listen to them during those seasons, except Sam Kim, I'll listen to Sam Kim all the time, <laughs> so it doesn't actually work for this. But... This song is the epitome of a summer day, and it's just like one of those really lazy, like warm summer days when you're just outside in the sun, and the sun is warming you, but there's a breeze, and the breeze is cooling you down ever so slightly so that you don't overheat, and it's just such a good song. Oh my goodness. And I don't know. It's super soft, and there's like a really calm guitar, and yeah, he has one of my favorite voices ever. Yeah, so those are my two main happy ballads. I mean, because this one isn't, Sam Kitten's song isn't sad in the slightest. It's just like, you remember that day we first met type of thing. And it's just, it's really sweet. It's a sweet song. So yeah, I have a few more that I'm just going to like breeze through. Daybreak by Newest is another one I really like. It's a subunit made up of JR and Minhyun. And this is another one that I like to play on a loop. It's really dreamy. And I don't even know if you can really consider it a ballad. I just like it a lot. So I put it on here. <laughs> <laughs> JR likes a track with JR. What a shock. Yeah, I know. For the record, my <laughs> initials are JR. I am not like a JR fangirl, although I am a big fan of him. I, um, I was just saying, yeah. you know, just interesting. Your favorite <laughs> is also <laughs> interesting. I know, I know. But yeah, another one. Beautiful by Crush. It's a goblin OSD. I think goblin is sometimes called the great and lonely god or something like that. That's a great drama. I highly suggest it. It's very well written. But yeah, I will also mention that Sam Kim has a goblin OST called Who Are You? And that one's also really good, but I needed variety. So I added this crush one because I also really like it. But yeah, a lot of the songs from Goblin did really well on the charts. And Crush is one of my favorite solo artists. And I really like a lot of his stuff. And then lastly, one more OST, Scent by Sam Kim. <laughs> he made this song for the drama WW Search. And I just really like OSTs. They're great. This one is really good too. It's, it's really chill. And the second it started playing in the drama, I knew it was Sam Kim's song because he has a very distinct voice. And yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to end this. I just really like the... I like the songs I picked. If you guys want, you should check out all the songs we picked. There will be a playlist. There will be two playlists. There will be two playlists. I'm wrong. Yes, there are two playlists. Yeah, because not every song we have chosen is on Spotify. So we have a YouTube playlist too. So you can listen to all the ones that isn't on Spotify. Along with the Spotify ones. It's a very long playlist. Right. <laughs> Sorry. We don't apologize. No. It's okay. <laughs> no need to apologize for that. Oh, no, I'm apologizing for the next playlist. Oh yeah, I've just lumped both of them together, so you'll have to figure it out for yourself which one is the sad songs and which are the happy ones. <laughs> and if you don't know Korean, well, good luck. Yeah. All right. Shall, Shall we, we round, round up, up the, the episode? episode? <laughs> yes, there we go. Twins. We're on the same wavelength. A close psychic <laughs> bond. Um, trivia question? Yes. Shoot. So here's the trivia question of today. You've probably heard classic Q How do you pronounce that name? Classic isn't it? I've never heard it said out loud. You've probably heard Kureji Kwai's She Is, as it's commonly referenced on variety shows whenever an unexpected romantic situation occurs. But can you name the drama soundtrack it was originally on? If you know the answer, contact us on social media and we'll give you a shout out on the next podcast. For today's song recommendation of the day, we're going very far away from ballads. 
Today, February 2nd, 2012, Block B released their second EP called Welcome to the Block with the main single Nalina. This EP was surprisingly controversial because two of their songs got banned by KBS and the agency whose name I have completely forgotten that... The protection of, like, youth, you know? Right. That one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The just bands all songs. Two of their songs got banned. It's a really good EP. And it came out in 2012. That's a while ago. Don't talk like that. <laughs> oh my gosh, eight years. Alrighty. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, then be sure to like, follow, subscribe, and tell your friends about us. If you want to interact with us or find more of our content, then you can follow us on Twitter at Kpop Sunbase or on our Tumblr pages, which will be in the show notes. Also linked there will be two playlists made up of the mentioned songs from Spotify and YouTube. We hope you all have a very happy Valentine's Day. And if you don't, we will have a topic especially for you next episode. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Was that stupid? No, it works. Say... Okay. Yeah, all right, it works. All right. Goodbye. I We're it done. Works so well. <laughs> That's okay. it. That was aggressive. Uh, bye. Yes. <laughs> We're done. <laughs> okay, bye now. <laughs>